Hello, everyone. Welcome to our DAT IQ Weekly Market Update. This is our update for April 16. It's episode 288. I'm Dean Croak, Market Analyst here for DAT. Uh, sitting in for Ken Adamo today. He's traveling. Uh, we've got our special guest, Rico Muhammad. He's on the road. He's an owner-operator with Crescent Carriers somewhere in Georgia. Uh, we're waiting for him to get to a safe spot uh, once he unloads his trailer. Uh, he'll be back on a little bit later. Um, he'll be talking about some of the trends in the owner-operator industry, particularly in the south east of the country. So for those new to the program, uh, we're here every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. Uh, we're here to answer your questions, so get those into the chat section as quick as you can. Um, you can also find the long-form version of today's uh, show on the IQ uh, website tonight. Go to dat.com forward slash market update. You can go to the blog section and the weekly report will be broken down into the three equipment types along with some charts and supporting commentary. So let's get into our key trends of the week that we're watching. Uh, spot rate's still um, sort of you know, almost flat, down slightly this week. I wouldn't say they're down a penny per mile, but, you know, kind of in between half a cent and, and being flat across the board for all three equipment types. Active contract rates, the average of all of the rates in routing guides for repetitive loads were almost flat also in the last two weeks. Uh, replacement rates for all modes, uh, flatbed, dry van, reefer, and intermodal on our contract side, uh, replacement rates were coming in negative, uh, but very close to parity. So there's a there's a sign in the last couple of weeks that the rate of decrease in replacement rates based on recent RFPs are slowing. Um, you know, two weeks doesn't make a trend, but the direction is certainly towards uh, replacement rates dropping. Uh, cash shipment index came in slightly uh, lower in March, uh, down about 3.6% year over year, up 2% compared to the last quarter in line with expectations. Uh, the March LMI uh, from Zach Rogers uh, out in Colorado came in at 58.3. It was the fastest rate of expansion in 18 months. Great report from Zach uh, last week. And the US Army Corps of Engineers, uh, they're working on a limited access to channel. I think they put a barge through there yesterday. Um, so they're looking for a 35 deep channel uh, by the end of April and completely open by May. That'll serve. last week, still about 5% lower than this time last year. Uh, capacity decreasing also across the board in the spot market as carriers revoke their authorities. Uh, low to truck ratio up slightly to about 5.18. And in flatbed, uh, we're at that time of the year when flatbed load post volumes start to cool off following the first half surge or the first quarter surge. Load post volumes were down for the third week, uh, down about 6% week over week, but almost identical to this time last year. Load to truck ratio down slightly to 20.35. Having a look at some of our markets this week, uh, we're out on the West Coast to start the analysis. Uh, capacity tightened in Los Angeles over the last month. Even though line haul rates were mostly flat last week, they averaged $1.65. Uh, these are line haul excluding fuel. So remember, you've got to add the fuel surcharge to these to get the all-in rate. Outbound line haul rates in uh, Los Angeles were up $0.07 cents a mile in the last month. Uh, volume of loads moved up about 1%. On the high volume lane uh, to Stockton, that's about 340 miles to the north, carriers were paid an average of 263 last week. That's 14 cents a mile higher than last year. Um, that lane in particular, Los Angeles Stockton, is a recipient of imports that come into the port of Los Angeles and Long Beach on the Trans-Pacific trade lane in particular. Line haul rates on that lane are forecast to increase by another 33 cents a mile to about 296 by the end of June. That's in line with an expected increase in containerized import volumes from Asia. And wrapping up dry van, in our top five markets, Los Angeles, Dallas, Chicago, Elizabeth and Atlanta, line haul rates dropped by a penny per mile to 152 on an 8% higher volume of loads move. That's significant. Saw that trend across some of the bigger markets last week. Rates down slightly, volume of loads up. 
in refrigerated uh, as produce season winds down in Huma, Arizona. Uh, we're in that transition phase right now from the winter salad bowl in uh, deep um, California down near the, Can uh, the Mexican border. Um, we're transitioning back to Salinas, California for leafy green production. Um, rates out of Yuma, Arizona continue to decline. The average reefer rate in the Phoenix market, which includes Yuma, Arizona, down three cents a mile last week to an average of 224 um, on a 46% lower volume of loads moved. Yuma to Los Angeles, one of the major lanes out of there, carriers have paid an average of 252 last week, 10 cents a mile lower than the March average but identical to this time last year. So we're in that transition phase where they literally move all of the manufacturing and production plants back to Salinas on flatbeds. In Salinas, uh, it'll be back to the summer salad bowl as we all know it. Outbound loads are up last week, up about 22%. It's in the San Francisco market. Uh, produce season is starting to ramp up there. Uh, conditions are very favourable for good volumes. Uh, Salinas to Chicago, loads paid carriers 162 last week. That's about 10 cents a mile higher than last month's average and at the same time this year. Longer haul loads to Hunts Point, New York, three cents a mile higher, averaging 171. In flatbed, um, following the Francis Key Bridge collapse in Baltimore three weeks ago, flatbed capacity remains tight, even though... Uh, jumped 72% week over week to Savannah. Spot rates up by almost a dollar per mile to 329 in the last seven days. Um, and lastly, we covered the opening of the bridge. Um, so we're looking forward to some better data coming in this week um, as the Army Corps of Engineers get some more data on when they expect that port to reopen. Lastly, um, in our year-over-year -year look at spot rates, in dry van, after being mainly flat for the last seven weeks, the national average decreased last week, um, almost a penny per mile. I wouldn't say it's a complete one-cent drop. Average was 157 last week, sitting about six cents a mile lower than this time last year and about five cents a mile higher than 2019, which is the light green colour on the chart. And in refrigerated, after being flat for the prior two weeks, reefer rates dropped um, by almost a penny per mile, also averaging about $1.86. That's about nine cents a mile lower than last year and about one cent per mile higher than 2019. And lastly, after increasing steadily for the prior seven weeks, flatbed line haul rates leveled off last week, um, averaged $2.02, $2.02 per mile. They're sitting about 12 cents a mile lower than last year and about a penny per mile lower than 2019. So that's it for the market update. Remember, the long-form version of today's report will be at dat.com market update uh, this evening. Look for that. You can download some of the commentary and the reports. So we'll move on to this short-term forecast before we bring Rico Muhammad back to talk about um, what's happening in the southeast as far as owner-operators are concerned. We'll start with our short-term forecast in dry van. For those new to the show, some of the colour coding is important. Um, the blue line is a rolling seven-day weighted average of historical rates. These are loads moved over 550 mile, excluding fuel, so line haul only. Um, the rate cast model is in green. That's our flagship product in uh, or flagship model. It's in all of our products. Red is the short-term model that heavily weights uh, data seen more recently. And then you have the yellow and grey, which are blends of the two in varying degrees. So let's start off with dry van. The general consensus is that all four models see improvement in the next 35 days. However, they do diverge significantly on by how much. Uh, given the continued weakness in several sectors of manufacturing critical to trucking, such as paper, food, manufacturing, uh, machinery in particular, rate cast in green is reflecting a stronger seasonal trend as we head into produce season. I think that's more realistic. 
Um, I tend not to agree with the short-term forecast. That lift towards the end seems a little bit more unrealistic. However, we are seeing an exodus of capacity in April in the first half that's a little bit alarming. It's a fairly high rate of exits and not as many carriers joining as we've seen in the last few months. That may make that red line a little bit more realistic, but we've got to wait for a bit more data in the next two weeks to uh, be certain about that trend. But for the moment, I think the green rate cast is a really good indicator of where rates are going to be. Uh, let's go to refrigerated. Um, produce season is beginning in the southeast. You're starting to see some of the seasonality come back into the rate cast models. Fairly strong agreement over the next four weeks. Um, some of the data we're seeing uh, in the produce season in the southeast is, is good. Uh, better news, though, in California volumes were up 10% last week. Nationally, produce volumes are only about 4% behind where they were this time last year. So we are expecting meaningful truckload volumes of produce to move that national rate needle towards the end of this forecast, which is in mid-May. So those four models all line up with pretty much how we're seeing produce season uh, start off this year. And then lastly, in flatbed, lots of agreement between the models. It's expecting rates to remain flat, or rate cast is in particular in green. It's, ex it's expecting rates to remain flat for the next four weeks, while the short term is in red is looking for about a four cent per mile lift over the same time frame. It really depends on, I think, how much more demand we see in the flatbed market. I noticed that housing starts uh, plunged this morning, according to the US Census Bureau, they're way down month over month, uh, still up year over year, though, so no alarm bells there, but that will decrease some of the uh, confidence we've seen in the flatbed market in the short term. So, again, capacity exiting the market will have a big impact on the uh, end of this forecast once we get April data in. All right, so uh, we'll bring Rico back in. He's um, an owner-operator from Crescent Carriers. He's a good friend of the show. We've had him on before. Um, he's uh, out on the road this morning doing a delivery to a customer. Um, we'll bring him back on now. Thanks for joining us, Rico. Good morning, Dean. Uh, thanks for having oh, me. I appreciate it. Uh-oh, can you hear me? I think you're on mute. Is he on mute? 